Hi guys, this is Klazer, playing another audio commentary, and this time I'm commentating on the Shinhan Bank Winners League matchup. This is the Pro League, new version of the Pro League between CJ Entis and On Game Net Sparkies. Um, it's an interesting format for the Winners League. It has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages, obviously, uh, are that you, you get to see good players more often because if they win, they keep playing. They don't just get knocked out, uh, and and that allows players to build their confidence and 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 build their reputation um, in. A league that isn't uh, in a tournament that isn't ranked as high as, say, the OSL or the MSL. Um, on the other hand, you don't get to see as many new players come into the fray um, for for the stronger teams, and uh, you can have a situation where teams start becoming overly reliant on one or two players. And really, I think in a team versus team game, uh, I personally preferred the old format because it was really a test of the strength and depth of the teams, and they couldn't just have one or two superstars winning everything for them. Nevertheless, this is going to be Savior versus Type B, uh, and I'm excited for this. I've been paying attention to the CJ's lineup of late, uh, and I have been quite uh, pleased with the way their managers handle things, holding Savior back. I suppose he hasn't really needed to throw him in, but nevertheless, that does deserve quite a bit of respect and possibly even a appreciation for the nuance that he's shown here um, by holding Savior back. Uh, and we're starting up on Coliseum. Savior in green, it looks like. Um, actually, no, he's going to be white. So Savior in white at the bottom right-hand corner playing Zerg at the 5 o'clock position. And we've got Type Lee playing Zerg uh, at the bottom left-hand corner in red. Um, this is kind of ironic and interesting in the same uh, in the same breath. We, we Type Lee's dumped Iris out um, in the second round, so it's one all so far to the team. This is obviously a best of seven format. format. The main question in my mind is whether the, the team lineups have to be handed in beforehand uh, or, or the coaches can make them up on the fly because it's a very interesting decision to throw Savior in on a map like Colosseum, which is so heavily uh, imbalanced against Zerg. If you look at the statistics, Protoss and Terran uh, comfortably dominate Zerg on Colosseum. Uh, so I do find it surprising uh, that e even a player of Savior's caliber could have been held back for another map or two. Uh, but I guess Zerg versus Zerg, it does equal out. But but a, another player, a Protoss Terran for CJs, would probably have had a very comfortable chance. Uh, whereas with Zerg versus Zerg, sometimes, sometimes, uh, it has to be stressed, it can be a lottery. Although, obviously, uh, not when Savior's playing. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. It looks like Savior's... Um, one of the one of the issues that I had one of the issues that I had for Savior and one of the th reasons that I felt that he declined um, in his performances was because he was trying to do too much. He was trying to win the Pro League and the OSL and the MSL as well as uh, and it looks like unfortunately for Savior he's going to be scouting in the wrong direction. He's scouting clockwise uh, and it looks like Savior's gone for an overpool here. Um, meanwhile. We've got um, Type B scouting in the correct direction. Uh, so both players actually scouting counterclockwise, but Type B is going to find Savior's uh, base first, and that's going to give him a little bit of an advantage uh, in terms of the early scouting information. Both players with very similar builds right now, um, cancelling each other out. So it's going to be down to their skills and their micro. Uh, again, Type B with a small advantage. Savior got, has got his extractor up, but Type B with a small advantage of having that early scout in Savior's space uh, and having that little bit of extra information, Type B's extractor up as well. Um, so this is going to be an interesting matchup again. Colosseum, uh, it's it's not a matchup that you it's not a map that you would consider really um, designed for startling for for startling Zerg versus Zerg play. Um, but nevertheless, I still expect ex expect great things for Savior, and I hope Savior this season doesn't. I know he wants to destroy everyone in 2009, but I hope he doesn't ca get carried away and ex overexpose himself too early. Uh, we've just seen six earnings pop out for. Type B. Savior's chosen to put the lair down first, uh, so he's going to have tech early on. And I think this is a smart move by Savior, even though he has been scouted. Um, I think it's it, it's smart of him to just get that lair up a little bit early because he's going to be able to defend himself pretty comfortably. Uh, and Type B is going to come in here with the six earnings. Savior's got four. Savior's got his six earnings out as well. Uh, and, and on a map like this, where where it does take time for your opponent to get across, um, even if they scout you, um, I think it's a clever move by Savior. Type B. And just positioning Zerglings outside of Savior's base. Savior's got his. So this is if, effectively this is going to come down to a micro battle between these two guys. Which of the two players is more effective in managing their resources? Type B continue to pump out a few more Zerglings, uh, and Savior's going to need to produce a, a few more in turn. And again, remember the disadvantage for Savior is that he doesn't know how many Zerglings, and that's that's the the one advantage that Type B does have. Savior doesn't know exactly what Type B's build is, uh, and if Type B could use that to his advantage, he could, he could put Savior under pressure. But he hasn't really been able to. He's just picking up the neutral sunken outside of Savior's choke, um, but that's not really going to bother Savior too much. The, as, as I said. Type B continue to produce Zerglings, hoping to catch Savior off guard because of the fact that Savior hasn't been able to uh, get an Overlord in there as yet. And now Type B coming in, uh, putting some pressure on Savior, forcing Savior to pull those drones away from the Extractor, and that's going to just give him maybe a slight lead in terms of the gas. Savior now 
uh, force looks like to put okay it's a spire initially I wasn't sure whether the Savior was there is up obviously he's putting the spire down uh, I was wondering whether Savior was contributing putting the Sunka down uh, personally I'm not sure if this is a great move by Typey Typey now going in with the Zerglings Savior forced to pull back and Savior in a little bit of pressure here Typey putting him under uh, consistent pressure uh, but Savior managed to pull out of it uh, Savior managed to come out of it uh, and he's the key thing here is that Savior hasn't lost any drones Typey is pumping in with the Zerglings uh, but he needs to do some more damage here other than just take some of the Zerglings out uh, he can't just be content with just uh, trading Zerglings with, with Savior because he's so far behind in tech because he's committed himself by producing so many zerglings and personally I think that's the uh, that's a false move by, by type B because he had the scouting advantage over Savior he knew exactly what Savior's build was how many zerglings Savior was producing he would have been able to uh, focus more on economy and take a little bit more of a risk because he had that scouting advantage but instead he chose to try and pressure Savior with zerglings hoping to outnumber Savior uh, but Savior has played a brilliant game really anticipating his opponent's strategy, knowing that his opponent had the scout advantage and anticipating that his opponent would try and put some pressure on with Zergzi and try and do some early damage. And, and Type B with only, looks like, nine drones at most. Um, and and he's just he's just concentrated on building. And Saber looks like now he's putting a, a creep colony down. He's going to try and build a sunken for defense. Uh, and unfortunately for Type B, he's just going to be so far behind. And once Saber gets those mutilists out, he's just going to be so much trouble. Type B now forced to commit himself with the Zergzi. He's gone in and Saber is defended brilliantly here. And Type B, despite the fact that he's focused on Zergzi and pre many Zergzi, is nowhere in this game uh, and Savior is just making this guy look like a complete and utter noob I mean this guy has just beaten the Iris uh, and he hasn't scratched Savior um, I just don't understand where type he's gone gone wrong here he's committed himself to those zerglings uh, and and he's just left himself behind economically behind in tech and now he just doesn't stand a chance against Savior because Savior's spire is out way sooner now Savior is gonna be able to put the pressure on uh, and type he doesn't even have uh, uh, the, the, the benefit of a sunken which Savior has, and Savior's now got his zerglings in Type B's base, and Savior's micro just outstanding, and Savior's going to be left with about four zerglings in Type B's base, and Type B's got nothing to defend with, and Savior's got more zerglings coming in, and Type B's in huge trouble here. Uh, he's at the very least going to be losing some mining time, but he's doing a decent job on microing those drones and keeping them away from Savior uh, while he tries to get those mutilists up and uh, up and out, and now he's lost a drone, and this has got to be GG right here. Type B in massive trouble. Savior with um, scourges out as well. Type B's got a mutilist out, but I think Savior should just continue with the zerglings focusing on the drones. Another two, another three. Three drones pop on. Type B's economy is wasted. This is GG right here. Savior just wiping the floor with Type B, arrogantly dismissing him from his presence. Type B with no chance, uh, and the two mutilists being chased down with the scourges and Savior's mutilists. Uh, uh, meanwhile, the zerglings continue to hammer away at. Um, Type B Spire. Type B does manage, and, and the, the Spire is gone. He should really GG here. So Savior comfortably racks up the first victory against his opponent. And it has to be said, in the last game I saw Savior play Zerg versus Zerg, he had the scouting advantage. This time there was no, and, and his opponent went for a bad build. But both players had fairly similar builds, and um, this is this is this is the problem when you're playing someone like Savior. I think players get this into their head that they, they've got to try something extraordinary, that they've got to try and pull off some sort of early low blow against Savior uh, and try and incapacitate him and hamstring him so that they can have a chance in the game uh, because he's so amazing, because he can just do everything at once. Uh, and Type B overcommitting himself with the Zerglings, it has to be said, and not really able be, being able to put everything off. Stellar defense by Savior, holding the line till he was able to translate his advantage. Um, in economy and tech into units on the ground. Uh, and, and really, the irony of that matchup was that despite Typey's focus on Zergling, Savior uh, pretty much crippled him with Zerglings of his own and just absolutely masterful dominance by Savior. Uh, and uh, I think Typey... Um, Typey's gonna, gonna consider this a good learning experience. GG nonetheless, um, Savior fighting. Thanks for listening guys, this is Clansart.